Welcome to the example number 10, to the project number 10, from the full stack JavaScript book. In this example, we will be connecting to the MongoLab database and we'll be using Heroku as well. And MongoLab is, would be as an add-on to our Heroku app. I separated this example from a typical local uh, MongoDB connection example because uh, there are a few moving pieces here I want you to get straight. So first of all we have this MongoDB native driver and uh, we have it in our local node modules and we have it in package.json. This is important because otherwise if you don't have it in package.json you would not know that um, Heroku would not know that you need it. Your application depends on it, so it would just crush miserably. Second thing here that is different that we use in MongoLab underscore URI. This is an environmental variable that Heroku will set for us. It's a connection string that will look very similar to your typical HTTP URL, but instead of HTTP, it would be a different protocol, but it will have username, domain, port, etc. Don't worry about it, just assume magically you will get it. In case you don't have it, for example, locally, right, uh, this is the value that you would use, and you can see this is the format, but just without the password and username, this is the host name, this is the port number, and this is the database name test. And then um, I'm getting this connection with client.connect and then I'm using list collections. So this will give me a list of collections and then I convert it to an array and I'm constantly logging it and closing the connection. That's it. There's nothing happening. That's not a server. Don't try to go uh, in your browser. Nothing will be there. Uh, but what will be uh, the information in the terminal? That's what's important for us right now. The assurance that we can connect to the Mongo app in the cloud. Proc file, we need it. We must have it. Package JSON, as I said, we, already, we need it. So now let's go to this uh, project folder. As you can see, I don't have a git repository. So to push to Heroku, we need to create a git repository first. And I'm using git init for this, so let's see. I have this .git, it's a hidden folder. So that means I have this repository, but I need to commit my files, so I'm using git add and git commit. The message is not that important. You can put anything there. What is important is that we do git log and we see our commit. So that means we have the local git repository, our files checked in into that repository. So now we use Heroku create to create an app and uh, to add endpoints into our git local repository using which we can push and deploy. So it says everything is done, just one more check, git remote-v, okay, in fact we have those two destinations. Well, it's actually one destination, one for fetching and one for pushing. And uh, let's actually push it. The command is git push Heroku master. So git push is the command, Heroku is the name of the destination, which will use this uh, HTTPS URL, and the master is the name of the branch. As you can see, my wonderful plugin shows me conveniently uh, the name of the branch. By default, it's master. So now we should see that uh, Heroku actually understand it's a Node.js application, and it will uh, install the dependencies, which is MongoDB, based on our package.json, Okay, so now the application has launched, as you can see, build successful, we have MongoDB. So let's see the logs, the command to see the logs is Heroku logs. 
because there's not a server, as I said, there's nothing to see. And boom, again, with this is econ refuse, so you already know, that means we don't have the database. So what should we do? We should install the add-on. Now, you can install add-ons with a graphical interface by going to heroku.com and uh, clicking buttons. I prefer to use terminal if I can. Oops, that's what the node command tells me I need to use Heroku add-ons create. Just a typo. I think it's just a singular Mongo lab. Yep, so now it works. It says setting Mongo lab underscore URI and restarting our application. This is the name of our application. Heroku has this funny naming convention. I love it. Welcome to Mongo lab. Okay, not going to read everything. You can read it by yourself. What is of interest for me is the logs. Okay, so there is no collections here and there is no error. No collections. It's an empty database, obviously. Uh, of course, there is no collections in this database and then uh, the, the important thing is that the error is null. So that's a good thing. The empty database is not very convincing. So I wanted to show you uh, in the dashboard the application. This is our application Calm Badlands. And if I go there, I should see Mongo Lab. This is it. And uh, Sandbox, it's a free plan. They have paid plans as well if you want to scale it later. So it's doing single sign on, redirecting me to the Mongo Lab. And this has uh, their browser. So you can see my uh, URL, URI. That's what getting populated into the, into that uh, Mongo Lab underscore URI. Obviously, instead of DB user and DB password, that's uh, they have actual values. Okay, and now I'm creating the collection. Uh, let's say it's uh, messages. Click create. It has zero documents, which is okay. So now when we so now when we go to this terminal, I can uh, restart my application and do the logs again. So now I should see that collection messages. So I just did Heroku logs and uh, this is uh, my newly created collection. It has name messages and uh, auto index. It has some options. System.index, don't worry about it, that's a system, it's not for us. So you saw that uh, we just manually added it to the dashboard via the MongoLab graphical interface, the web interface, and uh, then we launched this, relaunch, restarted the script, relaunched it, and um, it was able to get the this fresh name uh, from the list of databases. So that's how you can use Mongo Labs. It's a very basic example, but uh, we start from simple and then build up, right? So thank you for watching.